Yo, yo, what's up? It's the one and only hip hop gamer, Hot 97, and let's talk about why Sony PlayStation is the headliner of the gaming industry. Uh. One time, hip hop gamer, Hot 97. The moment it was over. Yo, it was like, <clears throat> it was like once again. You know what I'm saying? Like, once again, Sony show why they the most dominant force in the gaming industry right now and have been for quite a while. But this generation with PlayStation 4, it's been a madhouse, man. They going crazy with it. First off, you, you start the conference off with Uncharted. And the crazy thing about it, seeing how everybody reacted and how excited they was, it was so amazing to see that because... They are using Chloe as the lead character. You see what I'm saying? So to me, it's like without Drake, without the need of Drake, you still got a game that everybody is, you know, looking forward to. Because they created the importance of all the characters within the Uncharted world. So even if you're not Drake, you still want to see what this world is about through another person's eyes and through another character. That's crazy right there. So I love that. Satan it's it's ridiculous. And then on top of that, all the classics that they brought back with Crash Bandicoot being remastered. All three games. Look at how real it looked. It's like, come on, man. That's they bringing they giving you the old. They still keeping you interested in what they got currently and preparing you for the future. That is how you win and dominate an industry. By giving them everything from all areas, you know, from from in, in your life that makes you love games in the first place. So they're killing it right now. Then, on top of that, The Last of Us Part 2. What? Yo, the graphics on that joint look crazy and that's crazy early. You know what I'm saying? Just the mood, the tone. You know, the way Ellie was like, I'm going to kill all of them. Like, it's just the, and that little piece right there is getting me prepared for E3. Hopefully, they show, like, the first gameplay or something at E3. Like, that would be crazy. Then, on top of that, Knack 2. Knack 2. Everybody was hating on that before. Remember that, right? And I was supporting that joint. Knack 2 is coming, and that looked crazy. You know what I'm saying? Then you had the games like, you know, Parappa the Rapper. They had the Marvel vs. Capcom announcement. Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 is out on PS4 now. It's like... The conference was incredible. It was just full of a whole bunch of games. And, you know, it was special, man. Like, I mean, it's one of those situations where I feel only Sony can pull off something like this specifically for the PlayStation group of fans. You know what I'm saying? I feel like their catalog, uh, their investments, their their vision of where they want to be as a leader in this field when you look at the PSX event when you look at that conference you see that they stand by their vision by putting it into action it's crazy I was born and raised Brooklyn, New York into the streets walking my talk it was notorious back in 94 on your hot 97 the station I heard the dollars get it on baby um the most impactful moment in the conference, that's tough. Uh, the most impactful, I would probably, I would probably go with uh, The Last of Us Part 2. And the reason why I say that was probably the most impact, wait, you know what? Okay, this is what I would say. The Last of Us 2 was the most impactful because... A lot of people, like, people kind of knew it was coming, but they didn't, I don't think people knew that PSX would be the platform for such a game. Like, you know what I'm saying, even Neil Druckmann said it himself, like, between him, you know, and just having discussions with the team over at Sony, they really wanted to wait for E3 to showcase something like that. So, this was, it did have a big unexpected moment. So that's why I feel the impact was, you know, that, that serious. 
but also Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Like, when that, when you saw Mega Man, I mean, everybody was like, yo! They've been waiting for that. So, yeah, like, Marvel vs. Capcom, like, that, I think that had a hell of an impact. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because we knew Crash was coming. You know what I mean? We knew that, but all the hype around Marvel vs. Capcom on the internet, it didn't actually, you know, like, seeing it, that was extremely impactful as well, but I would say Last of Us 2 was most impactful just because I, I really don't think people saw that coming for a PSX event. I think that's fair to say. Flows gravy, then they start to pay me. I'm on another lyrical level like Slim Shady. See, nowadays the truth will get you killed. So you gotta play Bishop before they take out the steel. For real, the rare game needs a resurrection. It's not about complexion, being authentic with lyrics with the message. Yo, truthfully, I don't think Nintendo or Microsoft could follow suit, even if they wanted to do an event like uh the, like how you see every year with PSX. I really don't think they could. Like, let's, let's be honest here. Um, when it comes to Nintendo, right? You know, you got Mario. You got Zelda. Um, I mean, you know, you got Splatoon. You know, Splatoon is dope. Uh, I mean, when you look at Nintendo's first party lineup, they make great games. You know, don't get me wrong. Like, their games are incredible very well done very well polished you know but at the end of the day you know it's mario zelda donkey kong like it's the same things like you know do kirby in there but to do an entire event you gotta look at what sony is doing they manage to be at all the major events like whether it's pax uh uh um, E3, Gamescom, Tokyo Game Show. They're able to go to all of these major events. Show off some incredible quality stuff for hour, hour and a half, or two hour conferences. Whatever it is. And out of all of that content shown throughout the year. At the end of the year. They're still able to produce new things. That you've never seen or heard or follow up. With things that you probably seen or heard or that was announced, but finally reveal it or do something. Like they always have something to surprise you with, no matter what's going on in the industry every year, and they still show up. I don't even think Nintendo's in a position to do that because honestly, their catalog isn't that deep. Period. Their catalog is not as deep. Then if you look at Microsoft, it's the same thing. Like, you know, you got Halo, you got Gears, you got Forza. That's like their triple threat right there. That's that's their triple threat. You see what I'm saying? Fable ain't here. You know, you don't got that no more. Then like um, Quantum Break. I love Quantum Break. Quantum Break is dope. I love that. But for whatever reason, it wasn't well received, you know, in the industry. So I'm not sure if that's going to be a franchise or something that people is looking forward to in terms of a Quantum Break 2. You had Alan Wake, but that kind of fell off the radio, radar, so the impact that Alan Wake would have isn't there. Uh, Record, which was not a bad game at all. I really love the controls of Record and everything. But I feel like Microsoft, when it comes to you know new characters and new things, I feel like th they don't push their brands as hard as they should or could. I feel like... If a game comes out and it just happens to catch on and be hot, like if the people make it hot, then they're going to put extra money behind it to make it into a true franchise. But they need to put more energy behind everything they do. You got to think about this. I'll say this. Microsoft has been around since 2001 with the original Xbox, right? The official OG Xbox since 2001, right? It's 2016, 15 years later, and instead of having a game within your first party studios that could go head on and have the impact of, a, of a Uncharted, you do a third party one year exclusive deal with uh, Lara Croft, Tomb Raider, 
to have something to go up against Uncharted that's not even yours and you invest in that? You invested in Mass Effect. But it ain't yours. Like, like think about it like this, right? And Damon Dash said this the best. So all my gamers out there, I'm going to give y'all a hip-hop lesson real quick. So Damon Dash, right? Um, If y'all don't know who he is, you know, but Damon Dash was the person that taught Jay-Z and taught Kent Kanye and showed them how to be able to be entrepreneurs and be moguls you know, on their own and, and and build for them. You know what I'm saying? Hustling for your last name, making sure your family is good, owning your own stuff. Not working for someone, but working with people, but owning everything you do. Working for yourself, being an entrepreneur. That's what Damon Dash prides himself on. And, you know, Damon always been the kind of person where I want my own. I want to invest in myself so nobody could take nothing from me. I want to invest in myself and grow and live off of what I did for myself and my company and my people. Microsoft don't have that in their nature for some reason. I don't know why. They got the money to do it, but I, they just do not do it. You know what I'm saying? So to me, I feel like Microsoft doesn't have a deep enough catalog that's impactful enough for them to follow suit. And what PlayStation is doing with all of their games, all of their brands. You got to think about it. Since 1994, PlayStation has been investing in themselves. Investing in their first party studios. Securing this, securing that. Getting engines that's proprietary and exclusive. Like doing everything they need to do from the start. So that now in 2016, they can literally do anything. Like create anything. They can take the most risk. That's why they've been getting the most rewards. Facts, man. I reminisce, present the past future. I went over your head, so get the lead in our school. You see, it's a new day. Time to go back to move forward. We all make mistakes on the road to be flawless. That's why I stay focused. No plan B. I'm going to win because there's no hip hop without Hot 97. Two this is Hot 97. Uh, no. No, not even a little bit. Like, you have to understand something, all right? Like, PlayStation 4 has been dominating out the gate, right? We, we know this. We, we, we know this since 2013. The momentum that they have is not going to be stopped by a machine that's more powerful. You want to know why? Because you have to look at it like this. Xbox Scorpio, when it comes out, it's going to be more powerful and all of that. That's, that's great. There's so many points I'm going to make with this. First point is this. Pow having the most powerful system doesn't guarantee a victory. All right, we've seen this before. If you look at PlayStation, if you look at PlayStation, the very first PlayStation, the direct competitors for the very first PlayStation was PlayStation, Nintendo 64, and Sega Saturn. Sega Saturn was a stronger uh, platform, but PlayStation was easier to develop for. They, so because it was easier to develop for, they built better relationships up in terms of third-party relationships, things like that. At that time, Crash Bandicoot was more of Sony's mascot, all these other things. So their business deals and their ease of development allowed PlayStation to get that victory over the Sega Saturn and even over the Nintendo 64. You know what I'm saying? Because to my knowledge, Nintendo 64 in some ways, I believe, uh, and then, yeah, Nintendo 64 was a more powerful machine than PlayStation as well and stuff like that. But, um, but... Because they went with cartridges, there were certain things that they was limited to do because of the format that they chose to go with. Whereas PlayStation was CD, there was more things that they could do, so that worked out for them. But PlayStation won that, and it wasn't the most powerful. PlayStation 2, once again, it was not the most powerful. Because during the PlayStation 2 era, that's when the original Xbox uh, was born in 2001. PlayStation 2 came out in 2000. And PlayStation 2, look, you already know the history with that. That's the most, that's the highest selling console ever in the history of consoles. But look at all the games that was on PlayStation. Like, too. I mean, like, exclusive. Grand Theft Auto was exclusive at, at one point on PlayStation. It was that big of a deal. Devil May Cry, all this other stuff. It was crazy. You see what I'm saying? So then, um, that was the birth of God of War. Come on. Like, come on. You already know what it is. So, that's just proving my point that just, you know, X, the original Xbox was way more powerful 
than um the PlayStation uh, 2. So it's not about having the most powerful system that's going to guarantee you victory. I just gave you um two reasons of that. You know what I'm saying? That's one. Here's the second point that I'm going to make, right? It's about the games as well. And when I mean the games, I'm talking about the exclusives. Third party is always going to be the substance, what's, what's going to keep your system afloat. But the exclusives is going to be the, def the definitive factor on whether your system goes all the way up or if it stays the same or if it drops. Like the exclusivity is what des decides who wins what. You understand what I'm saying? So when you look at PlayStation, right? You got games like Days Gone. The new Spider-Man that's coming. You have <clears throat> Detroit Becomes Human. You got God of War. You got Horizon Zero Dawn. You got Death Stranding. You got Gran Turismo Sport. You got The Last of Us Part 2 that's coming. Like, that's eight games I just named. And none of this is including PlayStation VR and all those games and all this other stuff. But that was just eight games that I just named. What's, what's even scarier is that I could even name, like, I could name more games. That's exclusive that you're only going to get having a PlayStation 4. That's scary right there to think about that. So, um, Knack. Two, that was nine. Like it's just coming to me. Like it's crazy. So when you really think about it, Sony is in a position of leadership because you're led by your exclusives because that's what defines the difference between your competition. Then when you look at Xbox and you look at Nintendo, you're gonna catch yourself naming a few games, and then you like on Xbox, you're gonna you're gonna name Gears. You're going to name Halo, you're going to name Forza, then you're going to start thinking. And the more you think, the more you realize, like, wow, like, what's happening here? You know what I'm saying? Like, what's going on? Like, then, go to Nintendo, you're going to look and be like, Mario, Mario Kart, Zelda, Pokemon, Donkey Kong. But think about it. How many years have you been saying the same brand name? You feel me? That's what I'm talking about. Ain't no way the Scorpio is just going to dominate PlayStation like that the moment it comes out. And another fact, this is the third point I'm going to make that you got to understand this, right? The Xbox Scorpio is a premium console. So it's going to have a premium price. So, for instance, let's say Xbox Scorpio is $499, $599, whatever, when it comes out, right? And by that time it comes out, let's say PlayStation 4 Pro is $299. Let's say that, right? Or $350, whatever it is. When the PlayStation 4 Pro, like, really start hitting its stride even more in terms of games really utilizing it, like the Death Stranding that we're looking at, think about it like this. Xbox Scorpio, day one, like the very first time they show what this system can do, it has to, like, dramatically or it has to significantly be a difference in upgrade over the PlayStation 4 Pro. And what I mean by that is, if Xbox Scorpio don't have a game that can rival Insomniac Spider-Man, that can rival God of War, that can rival Death Stranding, in terms of graphics and performance forget gameplay at the moment because before you play anything you have to see it you got to touch it it has to grab your attention to make you even want to play it so before you touch or play anything you have to see it and if what i see isn't like destroying or or anything over what we're seeing with ps4 pro with the games i just mentioned it ain't gonna matter at that point because I'm going I'm to keep it so real with you. You could put on the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt in 4K, 60 frames per second, and ultra settings, hair works, all of that. You put all of that on. Turn it up all the way. And Uncharted 4. 
from a design perspective, still looks better than that game. So it's not always about just tech specs and all of that. Like, talent. Talent is everything. You can have all the power in the world, but if your talent isn't matching the level of power you have accessible to yourself as a developer, it will not matter no matter what. Understand what I'm saying? And when it comes to talent, Sony is in a position where they lead in that genre right now. Facts. Hip hop game up the home of hip hop. Got it locked every era. Make your head nod. Make your head nod. One love, one God. The hood, we go hard. Um, is there still a console war? Uh, honestly, to me, no. Like, the war is over, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, PlayStation 4 beat Xbox on um, one. Like, it's, it's done. Like, you know, the sales gap says it all. Like, so there's no console war anymore. Like, it's, you know, they lost already. Like, you know what I'm saying? For this generation. Like, they got the new Xbox coming out next year. Like, they, they already know what it is. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, and, and the next Xbox is coming out this year. From what I was told, it's not no mid-tier upgrade to Xbox One. This is the new generation Xbox. Like, this is the new one. Meaning that the Xbox One is probably going to be gone in a few years in terms of, uh, you know, production. They're going to cease production of the Xbox One in a couple of years. Because the next Xbox coming next year is the new generation of Xbox. That's the next generation of it. There's no mid-tier upgrade here, okay? So that's the so that's the first thing. So there's no console war, you know. And secondly, you don't even need an Xbox to play the Xbox games going forward because of Xbox Play Anywhere, which is something that I love because playing Gears on PC and Recore is just an amazing experience. It's amazing that that you can do that. That is crazy to me. I love it, but at the same time. It creates a scenario where, you know, anybody that has a strong enough PC, you don't need Xbox no more. You don't need it. Whereas, even with a strong PC, as amazing as a strong PC is, you still need PlayStation. Because no matter how much you love your PC, you're not playing God of War on it. You're not playing Uncharted on it. You're not playing The Last of Us on it. You know what I'm saying? So, that's something to think about. You're not playing that on, those, on, on nowhere else but the PlayStation. And yeah, the console war is over, man. Like Xbox lost, the Wii U lost, Sony wins again. Period. Every bar is like a true religion. We on a mission, using wisdom decisions to make the world listen. In my position, I'm aiming to make you feel it. See, I use words to touch you so physically you can mimic it. Was written like the book of Nas. Um, I'm not gonna lie. I this is one of the biggest surprises, period. Like, Kojima, like, using Guerrilla Games Engine, uh, I think it's, uh, uh, Dermasa? I think, Derm yeah, I think it's Dermasa. I believe that's the name of the engine. Um, you know, and it's crazy because, you know, when, you know, Kojima was with Konami doing, uh, doing Metal Gear, uh, the Fox engine was the engine that they was talking about highly in, you know, uh, Kojima, you know, was working on that. So, you know, in my mind, I, I would think that Kojima, you know, would just make his own engine and just, you know, do his thing. But for him to use this particular engine, it speaks volumes considering the type of developer Kojima is. That's one. Secondly, the fact that Sony has so many, you know, exclusive engines, not only do you have great exclusive games, but you also have an exclusive style that you bring into your game development team and an and a, and a exclusive style that you bring into the ecosystem of the PlayStation brand. You understand what I'm saying? Like, you can look at a lot of games that's exclusive, but they're powered by the same engine. Like, you know, like, like Unreal Engine. You can make an exclusive game on Nintendo or, or Xbox, but... It's using the same thing. You can do different things with it, but it's the same engine. But when you have, you know, your own engines along with using third party, it just gives you more value and more variety in terms of what you create, what you can create, and what end users and fans is going to see from your platform. This is what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? Like Sony 
has restructured their entire business model around PlayStation because they dominated so much since they started. Like you got PlayStation View, PlayStation Now, PlayStation Music with Spotify, PlayStation Video, PlayStation 4, PlayStation Pro, like PlayStation VR, Share Play, Share Factory, like all of these features and things. Sony is on a mission and they are achieving and accomplishing their mission goals as the years go on. I'm going to tell you something and I'm going to let y'all go with this. Every year at E3, everyone's excited for all the conferences before the show floor happens, right? Everybody's always excited. But I got to tell you, man, and this is so serious, I got to tell you. No matter how excited everybody gets for the Microsoft conference, the Ubisoft conference, the Bethesda conference now, EA conference, like all, no matter how exciting it is and how excited people get, from morning up to the moment of walking in through the Sony doors for their conference, everybody is always talking about what Sony going to do. What Sony's gonna have? I can't wait for Sony. Sony, Sony, Sony. And this is throughout the entire industry. Like, you don't understand, like, the conversations during E3 week when you at these events behind the scenes. Sony just has a stronghold on the gaming industry in its entirety. I've truly never seen nothing like this before. It's overwhelming. It's amazing. And... You know, I can't wait to see what Scorpio turns out to be as well. But PlayStation has defined their brand as the headliner of the entire gaming industry. And when you go to a concert, there's going to be a lot of acts. But there's one main act that everybody comes to see. And that's the headliner. Sony PlayStation has become exactly that. It's your boy Hip Hop Gamer. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. Make sure y'all follow me. One love and God bless. Peace.